Denying Death His Proper Due. Written by Natural Born Derpy. Published on the 11th of March, 2017. As Fluttershy went to answer her door, Discord took that time to spread his entire body along her couch, gobbling up the remaining three dozen sugar cookies left out on the table. A usual sight at their weekly tea time get togethers. What was rather unusual that day, of course, was who greeted Fluttershy at her door. Good afternoon, miss, the pony outside said in a dry, crackling voice. Sorry to intrude on you like this, but may I ask you a question? The pony outside wore a black cloak that hid his entire body. Underneath his large hood was nothing but darkness. In one stark white hoof, he held a scythe only a little taller than he was. He seemed to be leaning on it in order to stay upright. Um, Fluttershy began timidly. Okay, as long as you're not trying to sell me anything, I have such trouble saying no to ponies and disappointing them. I have 48 steak knives in my kitchen, and I don't even eat steak. The pony shook his head. Have no fear, little one. I am not nearly as nasty as all those door-to-door -door sales ponies. Rather, I am looking for someone. A rather special someone that sticks out more than most. Part horse, part goat, part dragon. Oh, you must mean Discord. The pony nodded, or his hood did. That would be the one. Do you know where he is at the moment, perchance? Actually, he's inside. Fluttershy opened the door to give her visitor a view inside her home. She called to Discord. Discord, there's someone here to see you. Still lazing out on the couch, Discord popped another cookie into his maw. Who? Another member of my amazing fan club? If that's the case, then that means we're up to two members now. You and whoever's at the door. Fluttershy shook a head. No, it's this pony in a cloak, holding a sharp stick thingy. Discord's last sugar cookie got caught in his throat. Not him! The pony in the cloak pushed inside, leveling his scythe at him. It's time, Discord. You can't put this off forever. Try me! Boom! Face! Discord wheezed out as his face became redder and redder and he began scratching at his neck. Gah! He's choking! Fluttershy flew to Discord's side to start hammering on his back. Oh, no, 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 no! Please, miss, the cloaked pony told her. It may be easier to let him choke. Fluttershy stared daggers at him. How can you say such a thing? Discord can't breathe! One last slap on Discord's back, and what remained of his cookie splattered onto the floor. Discord took a deep breath, then immediately began screaming as loud as a train whistle before leaping to the ceiling, wrapping his torso and limbs tight around a wooden beam. Discord pointed a claw at the cloaked pony. Get him out of here, Fluttershy! That pony's trying to kill me! Fluttershy's pupils shrunk. He... he is? But why? Because he's deaf! That's why! Fluttershy's ears fell. Oh dear. Deaf took a few more steps inside the house. Allow me to shed some light on the situation. Yes, miss, I am deaf, but only one of many. And Discord here, well, he's on my list. 
has been for some time now. How many times do I gotta tell you? You got the wrong guy, Discord yelled from above. I'm not Discord, I'm that cord. Totally different. Get your facts straight, buds. Please, Discord, Def said in a calm, wizened tone. You can't evade me forever. I will live as long as you do, and it is my job to send you off into the next world. And don't you think it's about time? After all these many years? Discord closed his eyes, shaking his head from side to side like a disobedient child. Nah, I'm never gonna die. Never. Come on, big guy. Dev held up two bony hooves toward him. Bring it in. Give Daddy Dev one hug, and I promise it'll all be over quick. Discord hugged the wooden beam even tighter. Don't touch me. You're all bony and smelly and old, too. Dev chuckled. A chuckle as dry as dust. I may be old, but I still know my facts quite well. Discord the Draconicus. 845 cases of probable death. 14 accidental beheadings. 81 major heart attacks. Living for centuries with severe diabetes. Frostbite, indigestion, acid reflux, numerous cases of hitting toes on coffee tables, and of course, the big C. Discord gulped. I have the big C? You don't mean... Yes, Def replies solemnly. I'm afraid so, Discord. Carpal tunnel syndrome. I'm sure from your many, many years of snapping fingers most carelessly. Now don't you think it's about time you greeted death with some dignity after running away from it for so many years? Discord fought on that. For a whole four seconds. Considering I haven't greeted anyone with dignity thus far in this life, I don't think I'm about to start. So tough titty, Death. Death pressed a hoof to his forehead. Oh, bother. Fine. Have it your way. Then Death stood on his back hooves while he reached up with the sharp end of his scythe. A few times, Death even managed to graze the tip of Discord's swinging tail before Discord curled it up around him. Stop that, Discord warned. Cut it out! No touchy! Again and again, Death continued to try and nab Discord down from the ceiling like some cat stuck up in a tree. Please, Discord, Death pleaded. This is doing most terrible things to my knees and joints right now. He turned to Fluttershy, who was huddled in a corner. You wouldn't happen to have a broom I could borrow? Or a stepladder, perchance? Um, maybe? Fluttershy went to grab a broom from the kitchen, handing it over to Def. Why are you helping him? Discord screamed at Fluttershy. He's trying to kill me! Again, Fluttershy retreated back to her corner. I don't know. I guess I just like being helpful. The added broom gave Def an extra six inches with which to poke at Discord. He aimed for the kidneys. Hard. Regardless, Discord stayed glued to the wooden beam. Discord glanced down at Fluttershy again. You know this is Def, right? He probably killed that parrot of yours last year. You should be hating him so much right now. Fluttershy gasped. Did you, Mr. Death? Did you really kill my parrot? Death continued trying to swat Discord down as he spoke. Actually, that would have been one of my associates. 
I only have three names left on my list, and none of them are parrots. My condolences, nonetheless. Crackers shall be missed. Fluttershy hesitated before asking, Um, Discord? But why haven't you used any of your magic yet? Discord's eyes shot open. Oh, right! Magic! I'm chock full of the stuff. I'm nearly bursting at the seams with it. Then he snapped himself out of the room to who knows where. Population? Discord. Death let go of the broom and sat down on the floor in a huff. Drat. Almost had him that time. He turned to Fluttershy. Draconikai have a terrible tendency of being caught off guard and forgetting about their vast magical abilities for a time. Until someone reminds them, that is. Oh, Fluttershy stared at her hooves. Sorry about that. Then again, you were trying to kill one of my friends. A friend that was meant to die many... Many years ago, Death corrected with a sigh. The room became awkwardly silent. Would you care for some tea, Mr. Death? Fluttershy asked. The entire scene was rather quaint. Up on a grassy hill, picnic basket and blanket, Plates, forks, and knives scattered about. Slices of cakes and wedges of cucumber sandwiches. Glass jugs of lemonade and fruit punch swimming in ice cubes. And, of course, Twilight Sparkle and all her friends. Princess Celestia and Luna included. Rainbow Dash was currently in the middle of a story. And that's when I said to Soren... Just kiss me already, but she stopped when she caught sight of someone fervently running towards them. Yeah, isn't that Fluttershy? Twilight then the rest of them turned. Odd, I thought she said she couldn't come because she already had plans with Discord today. Looks like someone must have broken him off, Applejack added. By the time Fluttershy got to the top of the hill, she was visibly gasping for air. Rarity levitated a glass of lemonade to her, which she polished off in a single long gulp. Discord! Pony! Cloak! Death! Bad things! Fluttershy shouted the moment she finished her drink. Come again, darling, Rarity said. With more words and less shouting, perhaps? Fluttershy collapsed to the blanket. I was just with Discord when this pony showed up, looking for him. Said he'd been chasing him for years... Luna snickered next to her sister. That does indeed sound like Discord-type business. Did the Draconicus owe the poor pony some bits, I wonder? Fluttershy shook her head. No, he said Discord owes him his life! Celestia's brows furrowed. What do you mean, his life? Just that, Fluttershy squeaked. A pony in a cloak came to my house and said he was there to claim Discord's life, and that he's been trying to get it for years. With a deep-set scowl, Luna whirled to Celestia. I thought you said you gave him the slip. I did, Celestia protested right back, 150 years ago. But that never meant he wouldn't eventually find his way back from the universe of half-finished scent. The other six mares on the hills stared at the two of them. Celestia's face quickly flushed. If you'll excuse us, I've just gotten the sudden urge to go sit on my throne and fill out some paperwork. Yes, paperwork. Luna's hoof shot into the air. And I will supervise. Good day to you all. And just as Discord had disappeared so suddenly... 
So did Celestia and Luna, zooming across the sky like white and blue cannonballs fired at high speed. Well, that was weird, Twilight admitted. Pinkie Pie agreed. Yeah, must have been some really important paperwork they forgot to do. Twilight turned to Fluttershy. So what you're basically saying is that Death came to your house to collect Discord? Sure, it wasn't just some pony in a costume playing a prank. I don't think so, Twilight, Fluttershy said in a hushed voice. I've never seen Discord so scared of someone before, and he just took off the moment he remembered he could. He left you all alone with Death itself, Applejack asked loudly. What a jackass! Actually, Death's quite polite, Fluttershy said with a faint smile. After Discord left, we had tea and chatted for a bit. Death's very proud of his dead grandchildren, although they never write to him anymore, on account of them all being dead. So Death can still drink tea? Rainbow Dash asked. Doesn't sound all that dead to me. Oh, he most certainly is, Fluttershy explained. When we had tea, he asked for a bucket to stand in. He's all bones underneath his cloak, so tea just goes right through him. He says he still likes it, though. He says it's warm and reminds him of when he used to have actual working taste buds. Where is Death now? Is he still after Discord? Twilight asked in a sharp tone. Right after tea, Death fell asleep on the couch, so I covered him up with a blanket. I think Death's very, very old by now. He forgot my name twice while we were talking. Stutter Spy, a voice in the distance yelled. Stutter Spy, are you around here? As if on cue, Death appeared at the very edge of the field, hobbling forward on his scythe. Fluttershy waved to him. We're over here, Death. Um, and it's Fluttershy, remember? Sorry, miss, Death yelled back. My mistake. Be there in a jiffy. A jiffy ended up taking a lot longer than anyone expected. Death kept on stomping in his tracks in order to catch its breath. Eventually, the six of them just went to him instead. So, you're deaf, huh? Rainbow Dash asked as they gathered around him. Yes, miss, Death said. One of many deaths, in fact. Prove it! All right. Death lowered his hood for a moment, as five out of six mares before him recoiled in both fear and disgust. Fluttershy's pink mane now held a streak of pure white going all the way down. I really need to hug some animals right about now, she trembled out. Rainbow Dash only smirked. Neat! So, now that you all know who I am, Dev said with a yawn, anyone care to tell me where Discord might be hiding? Or either of the princesses? The princesses? Twilight blurted out suddenly. Wait, you're here for them too? Afraid so. Out from his cloak, Death pulled out a long scroll of names. Most of them had already been crossed out. Those three have been on my list for quite some time. The only remaining three names, actually. So, those are all ponies you've killed? Pinkie Pie asked, bouncing next to him. I hope you at least said sorry before you murder them. I haven't killed anyone, Death told her casually. I'm only around to make sure the ponies that pass away get to the next phase of existence just as they're supposed to. You see, I'm not just deaf. I'm a deaf dealer. One of thousands around Equestria. When we start, every deaf dealer gets a list of 100 names to look after. And once that list is finished, and all 100 souls have been accounted for, that death dealer is able to retire in peace and quiet. The current record for finishing one's list is 36 days, 
A little unfair, though, as the plague was quite prevalent around that time. Twilight raised a hoof. Sorry to interject, but Discord and the princesses? Aren't they immortal? Death chuckled, as dry as burnt toast covered in sand. Would seem like that, wouldn't it? No. The truth is, those three are just rather good at avoiding me. What in Equestria is an earth pony like myself supposed to do against two alicorns and a reality-warping Draconicus? Heck, I can hardly turn doorknobs anymore with these feeble four hooves of mine. That seems a bit unfair, Rarity told him, flaking a bit of mane out from her eyes. What's stopping any of them from simply flying away the moment they see you coming? Exactly. I think it's a punishment for my deaf supervisor. I once called him a spaghetti head behind his back, and he later found out about it. Never let it go, it seemed. Rainbow Dash cocked a brow. Harsh punishment for such a lame insult. Mind you, this was thousands of years ago. A very different time. Back then, calling someone a spaghetti head meant that their mane appeared rather similar to cooked spaghetti. This time... Rainbow Dash rolled her eyes. I'll repeat what I just said. And that they had sexual intercourse with their mother every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights. While eating spaghetti. Oh, that'll do it, Rainbow Dash concluded. Applejack took a step toward death. So what stopped you from getting a discord when he was turned to stone for a thousand years? Or when Luna was banished to the moon. Discord stone casing actually kept him safe from my touch, Steph told her. And do you really think a pony on my salary could somehow afford a trip to the moon? Look at me. I'm nothing but bones and bones right now. Death laughed at his own joke. He was the only one laughing. Sorry, a little deaf humor for you all. I used to do stand-up comedy. Every night, I'd kill. Again, he laughed. Like dry twigs rubbing against crisp autumn leaves. Okay, I'll stop now. Twilight asked Deaf tentatively, you said you get to retire once all hundred names on your list are accounted for. What did you mean by that? That means that my job will finally be complete and I'll go on to better places, Def said in a hopeful tone. Yep, I'll settle down in a condo complex I purchased long ago in Las Pegasus. Maybe start a little garden, as long as I make sure to wear gloves. And if Discord and the princesses refuse to give themselves over to you? Death sighed. Then the chase will continue until the ends of time itself. After being told a total of 65 times that neither Princess Celestia or Princess Luna were inside a castle, and that they'd both recently relocated to a little-known town of who knows where, population no one, Twilight decided to just teleport herself inside. This isn't what it looks like, Celestia said, the moment Twilight entered one of the castle's hidden and locked away rooms. We were just trying to get some fresh air, together, all at the same time. At the moment... Celestia, Luna, and Discord were all mashed together inside an open window. Clearly, stuck while trying to escape. Keep that cloaked bastard away from me, Discord shrieked, trying his best to squeeze out from between both of the princess's plush plots. Discord ain't ready for no death. Tell him to go kill a puppy instead. Or Scootaloo. I don't care which. 
I didn't bring Def with me, Twilight told him. He's back at Fluttershy's. Well, why didn't you say so? Discord snapped his fingers, and he and the princesses teleported out of the window. He hurriedly made for the door. But Twilight halted him. We need to talk. All four of us. No, we don't. We need to run. Discord turned to the princesses. Right, ladies? Both Celestia and Luna nodded. Right. Twilight slammed the doors and windows on all the three of them. I'm not letting any of you leave until we talk. Discord nervously grabbed at his ears. What are you trying to do? Get us all killed? If death is in town, then that means we need to leave. Simple. What don't you understand about that? I can't die now. I'm like halfway done my first book of mice and manticores. Don't spoil the ending though. So far, I'm guessing it's a happy ending. We all die, right? Twilight, look, listen. Twilight crossed the room to her, attempting to smile but failing hard. I would just love to die right now. I would. I would. And I know I've been putting it off some time, but I just have so many meetings this week. And next week, too. Could that possibly come back next month? Twilight silence seemed to say enough. Celestia continued regardless. But next month is Flurry Heart's birthday. I can't miss that. And, and did you know that dying on odd numbered year is bad luck? How about next year? Here's what I'll do. I'll check my schedule and have my people talk with Death's people to set something up. How does that sound? Sound good? Unless I'm out of town that week, of course. You know how busy I get sometimes. Twilight frowned. What you three are doing isn't right. You can't keep on cheating death like this. So you want us to die? Discord said, shocked. How cruel, Twilight. How very cruel. You know that's not what I meant, Twilight tried to explain. But look at it this way. As long as you three are still alive, Death can never rest. He's old and tired, cranky too, and he's been after you three for thousands of years already, and until he crosses you off his list, he can't call it quits. Luna stood firm beside her sister. I believe I understand what you're getting at, Twilight. Together, Discord, Celestia, and I shall kill Death until he is dead. Twilight rubbed at her temples. I don't think it works that way. Fine, Luna said curtly. We shall go with plan B, then. Death stood over top the three bodies, scratching at the side of his hooded head with his scythe. So they all just killed each other? Out of nowhere? Twilight and the rest of her friends nodded vehemently. Yep. Should have seen it coming, honestly. Always fighting those three, I tell you what. On the ground, in the center of Ponyville, lay Discord, Celestia, and Luna, all with their hooves, or hands, wrapped around each other's throats. All three of their tongues lolled out of their mouths goofily. Seems... odd, Def said to himself. Almost suspicious. A trickle of sweat ran down Twilight's cheek. She eyed the free figures on the ground, collectively holding their breath so they wouldn't move an inch. A terrifying ten seconds later, Death shrugged his shoulders and brought out his long list of names, crossing out the remaining three. He told them all, Seems suspicious, but you know what? My deaf supervisor has been dead for centuries. This is good enough for me. Everyone exhaled a sigh of relief. Even those believed to be dead on the ground. Death seemed to not notice, or care. 
One last thing, Dev began ominously enough. Before I can officially retire, I must pass down my scythe to someone, bring a new Dev dealer into this world, as it were. He scanned the row of wad-eyed mares before tossing his scythe at Rainbow Dash. You seem capable enough, and the wings should help in tracking ponies down. Think you can beat the old record of 36 days? And that was when Death turned to hobble down the road and into the golden sunset beyond. Meanwhile, Rainbow Dash just couldn't seem to take her eyes off her new gift. She smirked. Neat! The End Bonus round! Courtesy of a comment by Sig Awesome. <clears throat> I opened up the door for death and invited him for tea. He had a cup of oolong dark and a ginger snap cookie. We chatted over a cup and pot. He said he had to end the life of D.P. Sullivan, my draconicus friend. A hundred names were on his scroll. To complete it, he was sworn. Discord name was listed there with two royal alicorns. We fought a sneaky stratagem to save their mortal lives. Death bought the ruse and then requeefed Rainbow Dash's scythe. Really the end now. Toodles.